So I've started recording now. So we are recording on the cloud. Let me check. Okay, we can start now. Can you all see my screen now? The SQS screen. Yes. Okay. So what's happening at the moment? I'm sorry. Um, I'm trying to do something. Boys, it's very okay. It's fine. I'm trying to delete something. It's taking its time to delete it so that I can. I'm trying to delete the replication that was there before. I want to try to explain again the replication side of things so that we understand replication again. Because when I started then, people were confused and I was troubleshooting. So I want to try to explain all over again. I try to simplify days of hard work for you to see what you can do to make replication work. And what I told you in the beginning of replication is that before you start doing replication, make sure you have given enough permissions. And I have already shown us how to do permissions using security, logins, creating new logins in security so that we call it unlimited, you know, so that anytime you log in, you use that login, you know, so that you can be able to grant it a user db owner. I told you, you make research about db owner, system admin, what they do so that you'll be able to grant permission. And then we talk about limited as well. That limited means that if you grant him only public access, he might not be able to access some database. So you have to go back to the video. It's very important to know because you will deal with such a situation where they want you to say you should as, as um, you should not allow somebody to access this database. This database should be read only for that person. That means the person can only read the database, but the person will not be able to edit it or, or try to change anything there. The person can query the database, but the person will not be able to change anything. The person will not be able to say drop this table or change any test inside the table. So these are what the permissions can do. So please read it. I've shown you the clue how to do it. Just right click, new login, different things will come up and so on and so forth. So because it's going to be part of your project as well. I'm going to make the project easier. I'll say, do this, give me the screenshot, send it to me. You practice it and it's going to be realistic as well. So, and we're going to talk about replication. Last week, let me first, I want to remove everything about replication here first so that we can start again. We talked about replication last week. So, we want to start again replication. So, I'm going to remove the replication here now. So, we're going to start again. After this, we are going to go to scripting. Because I've made a lot of research about scripting today, and we are going to enjoy that scripting because we are not going to use W3 school. So replication. I told you there are three types of replication last week. We talked about snapshot replication, which involve you taking the copy of a database and sending it to another base or another server, but you are not doing anything again. So that means the person will now make use of that database and you're not doing anything. You are just sending a copy of what you have to another side. And then we talk about transactional replication. Transactional replication means that after you have sent a snapshot already, the copy of the database, you are now making changes. So if the person make change in the publisher, I told you about a publisher. Publisher is the, is the source of the database. Why the subscriber is the receiver, the destination where the database is going. So the if somebody makes changes in the in the publisher, he can still send the changes, only the changes to the subscriber. That's transactional. But they will not be able to exchange things. So you have to read more about it. It's tricky sometimes when but the most common one is merge replication. The reason why people use merge replication is because there's a communication between the subscriber, which is the one that is receiving the the, the copy of database and the publisher. So that means that if you make a change in publisher here, yeah, and you make a change in subscriber, both will merge. So for example, if we are working on a project and I said, I want to do this certain part and that person wants to do that certain part in that rules. When you finish and I finish my, it can be merged and they are going to merge together. So that means that what you have, I will have it. What you have, you have mine as well. So everything will be, that's why they call it merge. Everything will merge together without overriding anything. So today, because we're going to only do merge replication because 
the step of merge replication, you have to start with snapshot replication. You cannot just say you want to do merge replication. Snap rep, snapshot has to take place before we start saying we want to be doing merge because merge simply means after you have sent the snapshot, the small changes that happen, that's what is going to be sending between the two database or between two or more database because replication can happen between two or more databases. So we can have many subscribers in all over the world and then you are sitting here in London and you are sending your data to every places in London. If they are making changes in Canada, it's going to come back to where you are in London. So that's why I say two or more database. So we, for you to start replication, you are going to do this right click. You say configure distribution. Now, I've not sent you the definition of all this, but I'm going to send the document to you guys so that you read it and understand it because I documented it when I was working then. So you read what is distribution and everything. So this is distribution. He said, this wizard helps you to do the following, configure your server to be a distribution, which can be used by other publishers. So distributor is the engine to make a publisher to work. Okay, that's the summary. So because if you don't configure it, then your SQL server will not be able to know if this machine is fit for replication. That's the purpose of being a distributor, okay? So we will select Lenovo PC. Sometimes you might do replication, for example, you might not you might only you might not have physical access to that server but you might have the server somewhere else you can select this so you want to use another server somewhere maybe you want to you know some people they work as a consultant they might just say oh they have full access to other parts of the world so you can select that one here and say add and then do this here and select sql server replication and select the server here and so on and so forth but in this case we, we don't have many servers so i'll select this Okay, you click next. Now, this is where we missed it last week in which I have to go back and configure it. So I'm going to re-explain. Anytime you want to do this, you have to make sure it is a shared path, snapshot. Because what happened is that when you try to do replication, you have to create a share folder, a share folder on that publisher where the snapshot files will go into. So that when the snapshot files is, is created here, it's going to send the, the snapshot files to the other server. So for you to do that, you have to learn how to share a folder. And I told us we must know how to do that. So you go here, on that, you can do it anywhere. For me, I just choose C drive. So I'll just go to C drive. I'll go to C drive here. If you can see my screen, that's fine. I hope everybody can see my screen. C, yeah. And then we'll go to rep, replicate. I created one here. Right click it. See new folder. You say replicate. So you have to create a new folder. So let's start. You just say, let me do that. I know. So I'll just do this right click, new. And I'll now say folder. I'll call it replicate. Sound when you're working, so you do sharing, all right. And then, can you hear me? Hello, yes, I can hear you. I'm okay, okay, because it's saying break. internet is on, unstable. Okay, it's yeah. fine, you can mute now. Sorry, um, so I will now click this share or advanced sharing. So I advise you click advanced sharing easily. You say share this folder, and then you say permissions. So you can, if you if you have too much privacy in terms of your PC, you can add the people, the person that can access it with their username. You can add their username here and say, you can, I don't know, maybe you have done this before. You just click check names, you know, and then you just say, because this is the username of my PC. So I say, I want to give this person. So this person, anytime he logs into his own SQL server, and he can access it. You know, I'm giving permission to this, but let me just say everyone here for now, apply, okay. And I say apply, okay. This is all about sharing folder. It has nothing to do with SQL, but it's one of the things you will require. So now I've known the address now, network paths. I'll just copy it here. I'll just say close. So I'll now go back to my SQL server. 
I'll click here, snapshot folder, paste it here. Do you see now? So that means that this is the part, this is the share part. That means that anytime there's a communication to replicate for the snapshot, it's, going to, it's not going to find it difficult to get the snapshot files from this place, from the other server. So the publisher is making this folder available to the other subscribers that might be anywhere in the world. So you click next. So you can call it distribution. Let's just call it distribution. You don't need to change it. Don't, you don't need to change this for now until you are advanced. Just leave it the way it is. Distribution database, you can now select your database. It's okay. This is what you want to You can leave this. This is the snapshot. You could see snapshot for that. You don't need to do anything here. Click next. Configure distribution, next. Now, what's happening now? We have configured the what? Distributions. Did you see now? So we have now configured our distributions. So it's going to take a while, but don't worry. Okay, so success. So everything is success. If anything is wrong, you'll be able to troubleshoot it as well. So, and let me give you an example. When I was working with various projects and doing replication, sometimes what happens is certain things will come up. It will give you an error, Google it. But most of the time it's because something's, before you configure, maybe you have already deleted um, replication and um, settings before. It might not delete properly. So there's a, you know, um, there's what we call a command, which I told you, you know, I told you about stored procedure. The stored procedure is what is saved. You can save that you, you can re, you can re-execute as well on your system. So Microsoft created some stored procedure to delete completely any, you know, any clogged files in, in SQL replication that might be hanging or something like that. But in this case, nothing is hanging anyway. So we'll leave it that way. So let's continue. And now what happened now? We have already configured it. Now what we will do now is that we will not configure our local publisher. So we'll say new publication. You now click next, select what we want to do. Let's use this adventure works, the same thing we've been using it. We now click Merge. I don't want us to do snapshot because snapshot is just one step, but merge is two step. Do you see merge? Merge we merge things together. Let's read it. The publisher and subscriber can update the published data independently after the subscriber receive an initial snapshot. Did you see? The initial snapshot is the first step of the published data. Changes are merged periodically. That means that you can schedule it. You understand what I'm trying to say? To be able to, you know send changes on both so snapshot is the one that takes long time to replicate because it might be a large database first so after that small changes that has been made is going to be maybe within 10 seconds it's going to be a changing but the first one initially that takes long hours or sometimes days it depends on the database is just the snapshot so next and then click next so let's just select tables and views here for now. Okay, I'll click next. Don't want to, to spend long time, just next. Then click next. Look at this, create a snapshot immediately. I don't want to snap, I, I don't want to schedule a snapshot. Reason is because if you schedule it every time, it's going to be loading to say I'm scheduling snapshot is sending large files every time. So you have to be careful why when you try to say you want to schedule snapshot. Snapshot is like sending large file every time. You can't be sending large file every time. Okay, you have to disable this, okay? Because you are doing merge. Once you have done the snapshots, is enough. That's all. Once for merge, you don't need to do other things again. So snapshot agent, you see security agent. Now I told us last week that you select this for now, unless you are, you want to be so strict and you have a company, you can put your domain name and you have to be careful when you do it. You know, you have to put your domain. For me, I'm using local PC. I have to say Lenovo PC and so on and so forth. For now, to make things easy, we use this. Don't worry about this, not recommended. Unless security, which I told you is strict, just use this. In this case, this is very important. Don't use by impersonating. Use this. Create. There must be something that will communicate between this, this publisher and the subscriber. So make sure you 
enter your own login here. So you can call it anything. You can say subscriber. Let's just call it subscriber, which we did last week. And then this password is lowercase subscriber. And this one also subscriber. So I make sure the password is correct. Okay. Okay. Which is lowercase now. Now, SQL Server Agent Account. We have done that. We'll now click next. Let's create our publication now. We'll create it. We'll call it publication lesson. That's it. So now, look at what's happening. Articles is now adding articles. Articles is the total number of files and everything that is in there that will create the snapshot, okay? It's trying to record it. So it's saying I'm adding articles now. I'm adding articles and I'm adding articles and so on and so forth. So guys, before this thing finish, I'm going to send the files, which I've announced already, dummy. I'm going to send the files for Tableau for us to receive so that we'll practice before we start the first lesson in Tableau. I see people are struggling. So you have to watch video for the basic first. So I'll be able to get the files. So when it's done now, it start, look at it. It says it's starting the snapshot agent. It means that it has started now. But if you want to know if it has finished, you have to go here, right click and say view, or where do we go? You now go to um, view snapshot agent status. You see it's doing 41%. So it's sending, it's creating the snapshot now, isn't it? It's trying to create the snapshot. It has to create the snapshot files ready so that when it's ready, you can now say, I want to create a subscriber that will receive these files that has been created. And I told you that where is, where is it creating this file? The shared folder I said. So you remember the shared folder I mentioned there. So if I open the shared folder here now, you will see some files here. You see, started creating them. So until it finishes, it's going to put the files here. Don't, so don't worry. So these are the files going to put here in this place, which I've already shared. So it hasn't finished until it finish it. It's not going to put the files. So it's trying to generate those files here now. Are we getting it now? What I'm saying, good. So before we finish that, let's, let me now start preparing you first for other things so that we'll start doing our scripting. I want you guys to go to this website. This is where we're going to practice date and other scripting today. So if you right click copy, I will write, sorry, I will send it to, so let me send it to, let me share it with you here. I'll put it to chat. Can everybody see it now? I put a link here. Can you see a link here now? I will send it to you. Can you see it in the chat box, Zoom group chat? Yeah. Can you go to that website? If you go to that website, that would be nice. I too will go there now. I'll show you something before this snapshot finish because we are continuing so that we won't wait for long. Thank you, Jesus. So I'll go here to this website now. My own. Are we all there now? Are we all there now? Do we see date functions here? Just a minute, it's still loading on my Okay, it's okay, I'll wait. So we'll be able to do date. So this date, because it's going to help us so that when I give us project, we'll be able to know how to do it, you know, manipulating using different dates. Because when I was building dashboard then, but with SK SSRS, I was trying to find the difference between dates. You know, they want to know what is happening. How many times the, you know, the aircraft is late? How many times, you know, so you have to calculate the difference. And then the difference has to come, especially in Australia, they are using different time zone. So you have to use, you know, in the dashboard and then you have to use all these functions. So I think mostly I use this date difference and date part a lot. So I use date different date parts as well. So these are those things you will come across as well. Later on, when you get used to it, there are some functions that will help you to convert UTC time. You know, they are just one line of code, but you have to just be aware of it. So which is going to be part of your project. If everybody is ready now, let me know. Okay. If you are ready, let me know, because this is what we're going to practice. But what I'm thinking first, 
is that because in this website, I got it when I was making research for us to practice more. I want us to click. Are we all there now? Please, everyone. Are we on this website so that I can just say yes in the chat box? Okay. If we click um, home, let me, let me just, yes. If we go to home, hmm. are we there in home now? Please type yes so that I can be so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry, which one is home? Home here, this button, if you click home there. Okay. Home, yes, okay. Now, you will see on this left here, on the right here, SQL sample database. Can you click it? Can we all see it? Now, you will see that they show us design of this database. This website, they gave us a free sample database. So that is what we want to use today. We are going to, you see this database is large, okay? But they gave us a file to execute it so that it's going to create it on our own system. Because when we are practicing with the date, we can be able to use that to practice with our own date in our system. So, and everything here on this website, we have to do it today with this database because it's going to help us. You are going to be practicing it live with this. What you are seeing, you'll be seeing it on your SQL Studio. So now, if you follow me now, you see the di different database here. Don't worry, it's the same thing, my SQL, PostgreSQL, they are using, but they are just different application. If you see Microsoft SQL Server here, if you click, click to expand code, can you see it? Just say yes here. If you just type yes, I'm, I'm reading the chat post. Okay, so when you click it, I don't want to go, so you go here, select everything here. Can we all select everything here now? This, what is, this is doing, I will tell you, is that it's trying to create a database sample structure, okay? Uh, we are still going to do this in our project because, you know, I told you, you want to create a table, okay? But this one is not for training, but we want to use it to just create our database quickly so that we can use it to practice. This is what you will be doing. You want to create a table. You see, they define it, primary key, everything. So in which we are going to practice here as well. You create a table, regions. Then you say the region ID will be what? Will be integer, identity, one, one, primary key, okay? Region name, it's going to be string, 25 characters long, default, null. So all those things you will learn later on very well. You practice and practice and practice. So for now, let's just do it. So this is how they created this database structure for us, okay? So that we can use it quickly because you can't take long time creating this. So you go to your database, this place first. Yeah, our stuff is finished, our snapshot, but we'll go back to this one first. Let's close it one. So go back to this place, right click this database, say new. So when you right click it, sorry. When you right click it, select this, sorry, select this, your server, say new query. Because you want to query, you want to create a database first, a structure. Now, remember that this table, this one that I showed you in top is the table structure. This is the table structure, okay? They call it database design, okay? If you see something like this, let me explain to you. If you see something like this, one to many relationship, okay? This is what we call one to many relationship, okay? This is one to many relationship. One to many relationship, okay? One to many relationship. So you learn that later on, but this is about database design. I don't bother about that one. For now, one to many relationship simply means that you have one author that wrote many books, or you have so many authors that wrote so many books. You see, there are many to many, is different from one to many, many to many, Many authors, many books. One author, many books. One to many relationships. So, but don't worry for now. We'll do that database design later on. So this one is copied. We are going to run it here. I'll paste it here. Let's see. Are we there? Can we run it? 
if you have problem, let me know. You say commands executed successfully. So if I refresh this now, I should be able to see something. Did I have a structure here now? Let's see. Because this is what we're going to use to do our practice. Can we see anything? Um, refresh. Create table regions, create countries, locations. Oh, 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 oh. What's happening? You said command res successfully, but where is it? Oh, oh, sorry. Is it called? No. Um. We have to go, is it workshop DB? We have to know the name. Oh, the name is not here, sorry. I think, so what happened, we have to create a database first and then create a structure. So let me see what name we can give it on that website. So I didn't look at it myself. So, so, typically to work, in case you have not worked with, you can use an online tool, um, let me see. The following script create the HUS sample database in SQL Server. So um, yeah, we create the table employees. So we have to say create database first before we create table. Sorry, I made a mistake. So I'll just call it HR. The mistake we made. What am I doing? Go here, right click, new database. We'll call it H. What can I call it? I'm looking at what we can call it. So we can call it HR. Okay, let's call it HR for now. So I'll call it HR. Now I'll teach you how to do this. Rather than right clicking and saying, where's this one? What am I doing? Rather than right clicking and saying new query, you can go here, connect, and say HR so that your query now. We, connect to this this query we have already pasted here say execute so now when i now check now when i refresh you should find everything here now the tables so countries department did you see now are we all okay now sorry about that can we repeat the same thing i did now first create a database call it hr if you can right click hr and then new query or you select anything you can connect here select your database in your query and then execute it are we have we created it please if you are able to replicate the same thing say yes or you talk yeah. and you. please can you go back again how do you okay. create a database please? okay right click this one database new database and then name it HR here. Just say HR and click OK. That's all. Nothing else. HR, capital letter. Yeah. So after that, right click it and say new query. But I'm saying there are two ways to connect to new query. You can go here as well and select the database you want in the connect here. If it's, you know, but anyway. And then copy the code. The code I said you should copy here if you have copied it. And then this one. Copy everything here. Everything here. Have you done that? And then you sorry, which code again? I thought you said everybody. I was saying that people should copy this code here. This oh, okay, one. Okay. Okay. Yeah, please. Only this code here in this line. Don't copy else. And it has to be on the Microsoft SQL server. Don't copy other um application for now. If you have done it, please let me know. It's very important so that we run faster with this. Um, if you have done, please say yes. Yes, yes, please. I'm waiting. Yes, okay. Hey, Bob, Michael, sorry, I'm going to take you back a bit. Okay, no problem. When you created the HR database. Yes. Okay, so under the HR, we just create a new query, isn't it? Yeah, you, I said you can right-click okay. HR, yeah. say new query. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then 
paste yes you can do that i said another thing in case you are trying to maybe you have run the query you want to now run it against another database if you see this thing here you can select database you want here so there are two ways you can do to run the same query so that's what i'm saying so but it's fine so um i'm still waiting everybody so the creating new database now i think we should get used to it creating new database because it's very important and then it's not writing code so it's just two steps right click and then just type it and that's all you've created your database right click new database and type it it's three steps rather so shouldn't forget that this one is important okay and then you right click new query is everybody okay now are you able to see your hr are you able to see this country's department dependent if we are all done, let me know, please. Yes, so once you paste the um, code, yes. do you need to execute it? Yeah, you have to execute it because oh. you execute it to oh. say, now nah, I'm querying it now. Yes. So you have to see command executed successfully. So some of the things you are doing is going to be giving you info that, oh, you are successful in what you're doing. So you should see command completed successfully like mine here. Yeah, there. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Now, if it's all done, you are still going to go to the same website again because we just created the structure, which I told you. We have to put data there as well. Data. They have already put data inside. So you go to the website. Do you see the following scripts allows you to insert data? So this is under Microsoft SQL. Did you see? You expand it. Did you see now? Please, if you are able to do that, let me know because I don't want to jump this part as well. The following scripts allow you to insert data into the tables. This is immediately after the code you have copied. You will see something that said insert data. The following script will allow you to insert. Just click it and it will expand. You will see a long code. Can we see it as well? On that SQL server. Here. Yeah. Okay. Now, copy everything. It's long, so you have to copy everything. See? You know how to copy. Boom, 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 boom. I'm not sure if control, control A will not work like that. I'm not sure if it's going to work only on that side because you have so many things on the page. So, so yeah. I'll just copy this control one. Is not working. Yeah. So, you better you drag it as I drag it now. Do you see how I did my. Mm -hmm. So, it's a lot of data there. So I'll not copy it. It's just for practice. So I'll copy everything here now, right? I'll go there, the same place where I, now what I'll do now, since I've created this, I'll delete all this now because I've already created it. I don't need this. So I'll just copy against this HR. And I have to know that it's HR I'm querying. So you have to know that you are inserting data to HR. You see HR, I still query HR. If you want to know where you are querying, you will see it here, HR. Do you see? Or you right click it and say new query if you want to do that. If you are there, let me know. I'll just execute mine and let me know when you are finished. <gasps> where is he saying error? Don't worry, mine is my own mistake. Let me see where it's saying set. Line 21. Oh, my create table is still there. You see what I'm saying? So it's going to give error. So I suppose not. So I'll now say, as a kid. So everything is done. You see one row inserted, one row inserted, one row inserted, everything. So you should be able to see the same thing as mine. If you are finished, let me know. I have an error. Let me double check. Okay. What's the error? Check the line and see. So mm -hmm. it will tell you the line. Or maybe level sixteen, state six, line one. Okay, what is in line one? Um, create table region. Uh, yeah, you have to remove that. You know because it's part of what you have created before. You have done it already, so you remove that line. Uh, or do you say I have the previous line? Why not remove everything on this page and just paste again so that you copy everything that you have 
Okay, I'll just create another new query. Okay, okay, thank No one is telling me hero. <laughs> okay, click new query and paste everything you copied from that. This, you know, they are to, in this website, as long as you copy everything, this one. So create new query because what happened is that some of the code you have before is still there. You see this one, copy from here, from this place. You, you see what I'm doing? Yeah. Down, 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 down. Uh, up to here, because I know it's finished here, because this is for Horoku. I copy, and then you go and paste it. So, like me, I've done it before. What I'll do is I'll just say Control A. I'll delete them. I already know that I'm I'm querying HR already. If you are not sure you are querying HR, right click HR, new query here, and then paste everything. Okay, I know the problem. <laughs> okay. I think I'm using, so, I'm using two system here. Sorry. <laughs> okay, it's okay. So now it's done. All right. So, which is good. So now you should be able to find it now. Sorry, under the HR, is it for the tables that all this is loading on? Have you executed it? I don't understand your question, Danny. Let us share. Like on the drop down, I saw master, so I went back to HR. No, mm -hmm. I said you should right click HR and click new query. You don't need to do anything. Right click new query and execute it. You should okay. see. You should see command executed successfully, something like that. So if you share your screen, I'll stop it here so that we'll do it all together so that we will not uh, spend so much time here. This one should be straightforward for us, so we'll be quick so that you know this one is faced. Okay. Right. So I'm waiting now. Right. Can you see my screen? Okay, I can see your screen. Okay, let's see. Now, for example, you have yeah, scroll down, you said line one. So let me see. Don't worry, don't worry. Just go up. He has said line one, there's a problem. I'll tell you the problem then. Scroll up, don't worry. Scroll up. So now since you have this, look, you didn't copy I will tell you the mistake now. I've found the mistake. If you look at mine, did you see? You see, that's why you have to understand what you are doing. You see what is happening. You see, you have star. You have. You don't have this backslash. It's a comment. Now I told you, comment is not executing this. Okay, but you are missing this backslash. So if if you put backslash there, it's a comment because you copy the comment. The comment is not complete. So it's thinking it's a code. So it's trying to execute it. So comment, this one is a comment. So it normally doesn't execute this, but yours is not complete. So that backslash, you have to put it at the front, at the back of that um, star. Did you see? Can you do that yourself now and see? I don't want to do it for you. In the first line, look at my own, own screen here. And then, okay, you can't see my screen. Okay. It's, it's simply that you didn't copy that part. She didn't copy that part from that was the reason. So you know that that part's not important. Do you get it now, Dami? Oh, say internet is not possible. I don't know why it's click. Hello, Dami. Okay. Hello. I'll... Hello. Do you yeah. get it now? Yes, I'm about to execute. So now I intentionally copy this part, this comment part, because I want us to understand the importance of comment. You are, mine, as you mm -hmm. see mine now, is a comment. We can't, it's not see, your, we can't see your screen. Oh, sorry, because I have not shared. Um, so, have you seen now? Let me, let me just do this. Did you see where I highlighted now? Mine is comment, it is green. It is a complete statement of comment. It means that when I execute, it's going to ignore this first part. Don't execute this part. Comment is used for you to describe how your program works. 
so that anybody that reads it will understand. So when you put data for the table regions, I'm just trying to describe it. It's not a code, actually. Do you understand? Comment is, you can use this. I can decide to use another one. Look, this one is another type of comment. This is a one-line comment, okay? If you have a one-line description, okay, you use this to comment for one line. If I have more than, if I say this is good, you see that it, this part only covers this part because it's a one-line comment. But this one is a large comment. So if I do this, you see, this one is green. It's a large comment. Do you see now? It's a multi-line comment. That's what I mean. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So if you now execute it now, it's going to work because it's a comment. It doesn't mean anything. So if you have done it, let me know, please. And then we can continue. Okay. So please understand comments. And then, do, 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 do. are you all done now, Dami? So that we can continue. Yeah. Yes, it has, it has gone. Okay, Thank we are all fine now. Okay, that's good. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to go back to our replication. Okay, because after this, we are going to script in throughout. So um, we're going back to our replication. We have already done our replication. It has said it's successful. So if you go to view snapshot status, it says 100% a snapshot was generated. So if we go back to that folder, we should be able to, you see all the files here now. I didn't do this, but I think my internet went off at that time. I didn't uh, do this. You have to go back and watch the video and practice. Huh. But so yeah, I think I think I show you this not to f I sh I just showed this so that you can go back to watch the video. I didn't show you to follow me exactly in this part. So don't worry, because you have to practice replication. You have to understand. The, I just summarize everything that you understand. What I'm trying to say because we can't sit all day. So you have to go back and practice. But it's all about sharing folder. So you will see how to share folder. The purpose of sharing folder. I mentioned it in the video and so on and so forth. Do you get right? So I'm doing the video for you to recollect what I've explained before in the other video. This is not a new topic. I've already explained before. But I think we had a problem last two weeks or so while doing replication. And I said, I have to repeat it so that it's going to flow for you guys. So close. So you now go back. So you go back to the video and re do everything. No problem. No problem. Now, if you want to redo everything, if you have done replication before, probably I will tell you, if you have done it, you can delete replication by saying disable publishing and distribution. But I don't think you have it anyway. You have not done replication, so you just go straight away to the explanation I've made in the video. So don't worry, just relax. Then if you have problem, let me know and I'll quickly tell you what to do so that you can go on. Don't spend many hours on it. So local subscription, you go to now subscription. You now want to set up those servers, those PC that will be receiving the copy of the files you have already created the snapshot for. So I will say, I want to create one subscriber. And my subscriber can be any PC anywhere. It might be a PC in, in America. It might be anywhere. So let me give you an example. One of the projects was like, we quickly went for a short contract, then somewhere else in a remote place. So it is another country in a remote place. So I have to set that up. So I have to select the PC. We use VPN um, to be able to have the server name already, you know, connect and then subscriber. So we have already set up the subscriber here before they move remotely. So that anytime they connect with VPN, it's going to communicate, you know, with, with the publisher to replicate what is because in Scotland. So even though it was in America in a remote place or so, but it was replicating to, you know, to Scotland because they need the data as well to know, to analyze the data as well. So that's what is happening. So that's the purpose of replication. It's merge, merge replication. That's what we implemented then. So now in this case, this subscriber, I want to, the reason why I'm so, uh, setting up subscriber is that I want to have a copy of this database in case there is problem with it, you know, you want, you don't want, um, you don't want problem. Sometimes maybe the publisher is, is not working again. You can go back to the subscriber and say, I still have the copy of the database. So some people use replication as a purpose of backup as well. Okay. So that's one of the purpose of replication. So even 
the to, to this technology, whether you call it cloud technology, they are still using, even though it's not replication per se, but it's still replication per se because there are so many servers that is connected. You know, one of the, maybe later on in future, you understand cloud technologies, you know, they have so many server everywhere, but they are really connected so that when one is broken down, another one is still working. You see, it's the purpose of, you know, managing redundancy and everything like that. You understand what I'm trying to say? So that's what I would say, okay? So this one, I will now say this is the same PC I want to use anyway. I want to, this is the publisher. I will select the publisher here. This is the publisher. Okay. I will see the publication lesson is the publisher now. I will say, now I explained this last week. It's what we call push subscription and push subscription. And I say I recommended pull subscription. The reason why I recommended pull subscription is because the difference between push is that publisher we keep pushing and it's going to be overloading if you have so many so many servers everywhere that you are trying to you know send the changes to from your publisher it's going to be doing the hard work and if the subscriber want to send the data back also it's still the publisher that will be doing the hard work and saying oh i'm talking to you it's like you want to get something from me and i'm the one calling you ah can't you call me can't you call me do you understand you know it's very hard isn't it you are you get what I'm trying to say, like you want to get something from me. If you need something from God, are you not the one that will say, God, I need it from you? It's now God that is calling you. Michael, Michael, do you want that thing? Do you still want this thing? So God is now begging you to give you something. So that's I, I'm just giving that analogy. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. God loves us, He will really give us something, but I'm talking about you know what we need. Or it's like an employer is knocking at your door and say, please, 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 please. But you need money, isn't it? You want to work as well. So it's good to use pull subscription. Pull subscription means that the work is, is now on the subscriber to say, I want to send you my data. Uh, there's a change here. I've, there are some changes in my, in, my, in my database. I want to send you the packet of the changes that has happened in my database. Can you receive it, publisher? So that's why we use pull rather than using push. So you will see here, they said in this place, they said this option makes it easier to administer the synchronization of subscription centrally. But pull, he said this option reduces the processing overhead at the distributor unless each subscriber administers the synchronization of the subscription. So it gives more work. So I will recommend this for you guys. Okay. Pull, Nest, Lenovo PC. You want to now set up everything. Go here. Your subscription database. What's your subscription database? Have we set up a subscription database? You must have a subscription database. We have not. We, so, we did that last week, but this is the one. So I will use this. But I want us to set up new database for that. So I will delete this. I will set up new for us. You must set up a new database for it because it might be another PC where it is. So consider this as your new PC as well, another PC. So I'll just say new database. I'll call it subscriber. Um, subscriber. Subscriber, let me call it on subscriber receiver. Just for clarification, okay. Now go back here. Back next. I should be able to see it now. Refresh. I need to refresh it to see what is happening. This is what I've created now. So this will be the one that will be receiving it now. Click next. How did you refresh? Did you have to right click? No. It's, there's an option here, refresh. Database list. All right. This is it now. Yeah. So subscriber receiver, click next. And then what you do now is that you now do connection to everything. You do connection now to both so that they can communicate. I said, I recommend this for us, use this. Use the same thing I told you then. Subscriber, just the password. You can use anything, don't forget. You can use any, I'm just using this. So you can use anything you want to use, okay? That you, but I recommend use something you have already created as even SQL server login already, you understand? So, but now I'm, I'm giving it what I have. So this is the one for, you see, they have the same password, the same, this is so that it will communicate with the publication as well, all right, with the publisher, and then things can go smoothly, okay? 
next. So I will say run on demand only, but because it's a merge replication, normally you do schedule, okay? Because you, you say, how many, how many times do you want to be making sure maybe they, you know, it's a busy time. So you might have to be doing, some people do it every one hour, every 30 minutes. Brother Michael, oh, yeah? Yeah. you mentioned that um, scheduling is not good. Is he on the uh, okay. publisher? That's, that's a very good question. That one was for snapshots. Right, yeah. Snapshot is the initial um, sending of files. It's a large file first. So let me give another example. I have, we have already a database that we have been storing for 10 years. And then database, we are now realized that though we have a backup, but we said, oh, we want to have another location in, in London. So, and say, okay, we want to set up another database there. So, but we want to, so that any changes we make in, in Aberdeen, it has to reflect also in London. But the first thing we need to do is to send the first large database and create, you know, the large database first, the snapshot into what? Into London first. So that's the initial one, snapshot, but when it's there, it's there forever. Now, you don't want the snapshot to keep repeating itself every time. You don't schedule it, okay? It's rare to do that. So now what happened now is that after that, what we come next is what we call merge. Things, the small changes you make here in Aberdeen will only be reflecting there. It's not going to be sending everything again. So the small changes they make in London is going to be now reflecting in Aberdeen. They are not going to be sending large files between, you know, between the two um, base. Do you get what I'm trying to say now? But in this case, it's for merge. It's not for snapshots. So you can schedule this, okay? That's what I'm saying. So I'll cancel this. For the purpose of this, I'll just say run on demand only. I don't want my PC to be running every time. So next, if you are wondering how I did it, you can schedule. It's easy to schedule. I think we should not find it difficult. You can select weekly, daily. You know, it's easy to do. You just, you understand? It depends on how busy your company is and how you want it, okay? So I'll say, okay, sorry. I don't need this because I cancel it. So run on demand, next initialize what is the purpose of initialize initialize simply means that immediately you finish this setup it should start the first match the first stop next now i told you about conflict there's what we call conflict sometimes conflict happens even though we say it's going to merge sometimes for example i enter the same information here i enter the same information there and sometimes they kind of a a conflict you get what i'm trying to say it normally doesn't happen but sometimes it happens okay but if it happens which one should win which one should overwrite okay so you can select publisher should wins because the server is the one that is the boss it's, it's like you are talking in the office you know who, which one, who is the one that has the priority is the boss now the manager so publisher is the manager is the one that should win first but you can change it if you want to I'm just giving an example. You understand? So mo that's why it is set to this place, but you can always change it. You understand? You can say, oh, priority, you can change it. But this one, when you begin to get advanced, that's when you begin to set 75, 100, but just leave it this way. Okay, first two. Next, create, next. Don't worry, you did this in project. I'll, I'll, I'll trick it for us and then we'll do much more. Perfect. So now it's done. You know what is happening now. I've done it. What you do now? Is it working? You right click and say view synchronization status. You see, it's now applying the snapshots to the subscriber. Do you see now? It's now sending all the assuming this one that I set up is in London. It's sending everything now to what? To London. If it is 20 years worth of data, I'm sending it to what? To London. You get what I'm trying to say now. So you are now sending the initial file. Now what happened when it's finished? What we are going to do is that we're going to do an assignment for me. I want you to write a, we are going to do it together. Maybe probably in our next lesson, please remind me. We're going to make a small change into this place, the subscriber receiver. We're going to make another small change in this adventure works. And we're going to see if they are going to merge. We're going to see 
but we are going to run it on demand means that we are going to just manually run it like it's going to take one minute to do so when we do that we'll see if they are, we are going to see merge between the two database okay so you will see how merge works okay that's what i would say okay i use merge replication for four years for projects so and it works as well it saves money many companies use it to save money it x you know you know if anything goes wrong you know there's a lot of advantages to it i've never seen any you know that's why i like microsoft so it's a good thing you don't know in future you might recommend it to my safe company that's what i did to save the company then and so on and so forth i think so that's it and so on and so forth so that's one of those things so it's not really about you know as i said we don't know where we'll be in future an idea can you know so that's it god is good ah so we are going to leave this for now okay it's going to work trust me so in our next lesson we will now change we'll create table create table at least we'll be comfortable to create table then and say i want to create a table a new table for this adventure works a new table i want to see if it's going to reflect i want to make changes i'll see what's going to happen is that okay 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 that's fine now let's move on let's keep going now since we have already done this we already have this database we're going to start our lesson on dates we already have dates if we are on dates can we go to the website now and let's click on dates this website we're going to click on dates um do you know if you are finding your own dates let me know because it's very important to if you can go back to the first link i sent you from the charts that would be nice for us rather than looking for dates here in this place so i'll just go back to my hair because i don't know where the date tutorial is for us but i know i put Dates. If you go back to the one I sent to you initially, the dates, this one, date functions. If you go back to our chat boss, um, let's create date functions. And then that's it. Are we all there? Let me check chat boss. If you are there, let me know. If you need my help, let me know. In the chat box, I send the link. Just click the link. You see it there. Okay, I will continue. So we see current dates. Sometimes you want to work on the current date. So let's use an example of the database we created mm -hmm. for dates. Current dates. So we want to do current dates. Is it going to work? Is it going to work? So how am I going to get current dates? What are the things that I should use to get current dates? Normally, in some database, they use now, everything. But for us, we'll use this function, OK? So we'll use this function called get dates. But I don't know why they are using this. Hold on. That's why I don't like tutorial. They are not they are not specific. So let's say select current dates. Let's see what it's going to do. This one they don't normally use it, so don't worry. But it's just for you to know that there is a function called this one. So this one is just an introduction. So I'll just ignore it for you. But we'll try it and see. Select current date means that it's going to give you full dates. So let's start practicing here. So let's say it's not querying any database. Look, select current date. So this one, I know it's not going to work. Trust me. Select current date doesn't make sense because I was looking at it. So it's a function. Let me see how the structure that this thing. Um, I've not used it. I don't use it before. And this is SQL. This is a hold command. Normally, if you want to use date, I know this function works. So I'll use. I know date works, get date works. So for example, if we use this one, we work. So don't worry, I'm just practicing what they put there. Now you see this one now, cast, get date as date. 
current date. Now, cast is one of the function that you use to convert anything to what you want. This get date is the, so let me do something. If I do this, let me see if it's going to work. Select get date as dates. This is column name. Don't worry about this now. Let's see. This. See what happened. What did you see? It gives the long name. And sometimes some people don't like it. You have the time, the seconds, the milliseconds, and everything there. Did you see? But CAS helps you to convert it to date alone. So if I say time here now, if I say cast, so if I go back here and say cast helps you to simplify everything. Do you get what I'm trying to say? There's a, still another one called, but not now, but we are just practicing this. So if I do this time, it's going to put what? Put time there with milliseconds. Now, later on, as we go on and practice, we can break it to 2149. If I said I want seconds alone, I can only extract seconds. But cast, the purpose of cast, later on, we are going to break it down and say, this is the format I want, this is the format I want. But this is just the introduction. So if you want to get the exact date now, you just want to put a date stamp. You understand? You can say as date stamp. If I say as date stamp, later on, you have to just write as date stamp. Where is date stamp? I don't know it's date stamp. Okay, don't worry. Let's use as date time. See, the same thing as date time. Let's see as normally. This is the first bit. So let's leave it now. I'll go back. Hey, someone is sending me test on WhatsApp. Okay, sorry. It's not us. Okay, the next one is this one. I finished this one for now. That's get date. Cast. We are still going to use cast. So my example, what I will do for us now to make us realize the, you know, the purpose of cast, is that we've used current date. Let's use current time. We we'll use current time. Current time is the same thing I've explained. You can use cast. Now they use convert here. So we're still going to practice convert to car. This one is not in Microsoft and they put it here. So these people made a mistake. I think what is happening here is that they, they are doing tutorial on MySQL as well and SQL, sorry. That's why, because I know Toka can never work with SQL, okay? So this one is not for SQL. So what I would do for you guys is that I'm going to, don't worry, it's just they are missing everything together, but don't worry guys. So that's why I know that yeah, there, is, there, is a, there is a note on top of those um, queries. Uh -huh. There is a note that tells you what they are doing. Okay, uh, they have said it. Yeah. SQS uh, doesn't support. Okay, yeah, they are right as well. So okay, good. Because I was thinking I've never seen that before in SQL. Okay, perfect. So this one, Toka, Oracle use it. So Oracle and Postgre use it. I've used it before then as well. So the one for SQL. Let me see what they use for SQL here. Um, okay. They didn't put anything for SQL here. That's probably funny. But the one of cast is enough for us. So what I'm going to do, hmm, these people are funny. They're supposed not to put SQL then as tutorial. Okay. Let's go. I'll, I'll show us something. Let me go back to, um, but we understand get dates now. If you want to get it, but what we want to do is using cast function. So I'll say cast date, today's date as string. Means that it's going to cast it, but I'm looking for something that is going to be converting it. So we have to go to another tutorial. Sorry about this, sorry. I have to quickly go. It's, there are many there, we we'll practice it with our stuff. They are not serious. This is not good. They are using Postgre a lot, and um, but that one is not in Microsoft SQL. So I'll just say cast date tutorial first. We have so many. And cast and convert. Probably we should use this. Maybe we should use this cast and convert. Let's get to it. Ah, we are still in the same website. No, I don't want this. Did you see the, they do that? Well, it's fine, right? 
let me see if this one has another example for us. Microsoft website itself. Mm. Yeah, now let me explain this before we go. Now, anytime you are working with date as well, before we start practicing, some of them has code. Because sometimes you have so many, you will have to deal with complicated key data and so on. Some might be in US format. You see this date format. So sometimes you use CAD. You can use this format, say, divine it this way when we are converting, or use this 101 or 102. So they have, you see, a ANSI code and everything. You can use 102 instead of saying you want to divine it this way. Did you see what I'm saying? Code 103 when you're using CAS and everything like that. So for example, let me see if they give an example here. Mm, my God. I don't like myself sometimes. Um, I want it to be simple as much as possible for us. But I'm not finding it that it's going to be easy for us. Okay. That cast is a very good example. No, I have to get data tutorial, SQL data tutorial. Uh, let me see if these people can help us. Tutorial is also good. Let's see. Let's see if this one is okay for us. Add dates. Uh -huh. I think these people might be okay. Let's start with add dates. This one we had dates. Let's see if we can practice one here. So if I want to add dates, we can use date add. So for example, I have, so for example, let me, I'll give you an example. Did you see this sample here? I'll, I'll tell you what happened. So we'll use this escalator. I think it's better for us. If I do this now, Normally, if you have something like this, so if I do select, what is it? I know it's a test, it's supposed to be. I'm getting fed up. Date add. Um, that's why I don't like all this. Oh, sorry. And my SQL doesn't matter. The tag is in Microsoft. Ah. Oh, my goodness. How am I going to? Dates. Yes. Let me see if they have get dates. I don't know if they are talking about. Ah, they are not talking about SQL. This is my SQL, everything. Uh. Oh God, let me see if this one will help us so that we can do the tutorial here. Okay, let's see. I think these people might help us. This sometimes I Scribbly for the time type. So, which I've said, you have to be, you know, very good at manipulating dates. So, um, but still, no, it's not giving us what we want. I might have to prepare my own document for this. But there should be, I know there is. You two can find one. Um, I know now it's okay. I know about now. So if I say select now, get date, all those ones work. Get date now. Select now. Normally it won't work anyway. Now it's not like it's not beating for sure. They've canceled it. Okay. No, I can't stay here. We have to go to other tutorial now. W3 schools. 
Let me see if they have date again. We we know one to two days that day. And they didn't give us much on date. Learn SQL. Yeah. This thing has to do with okay. So guys, it's time for us to move on. I haven't found one for date yet. So I have to make research on more. Because I thought that one is good for not knowing they are doing. Because I want something for us to be comfortable with. Because it's going to take a whole lot of effort from us. Because we want to be converting data and ah, I'm not happy. Sorry, sorry about this. Let's move on with other things there. So um, so let's go back to the chat post again. Um, let me see if we have dates here. Do they have dates here? They don't have dates. Jesus, my God, dates. No dates, no dates, no dates, no dates, no dates. Okay, everybody's avoiding dates. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do now is that we'll go back to the same website. We'll practice with database we have created anyway. So that won't stop us. So we're going to start with home. We already know about select all, if I'm right. So let's do SQL select. We have already created the database. So let's select with the same database we created. The employee, you know, we, are, we created an employee table. So we want to select. I think we all know all this. I don't want us to go back. We all remember select, if I'm right. Hello? Do you all remember select statement we did on HR? Yeah. So there's no need to do tutorial on select. I don't want us to go back to that. So I rather, what are you not comfortable with in all this stuff? Because there are a lot that is still here we are going to practice, but I want us to see what we are not comfortable with first. Let me open it. Are we okay with select? Can we do other by? Yeah, I think we have a video for that as well. This thing, mm -hmm. we use limits. It's almost similar to select top or something. Limits means like you want only certain part of the query. Do you want us to practice limits? Yeah. Okay. But we know these things we not repeat duplicate, yeah? So we all know that. So we want to practice limits. To retrieve a portion of rows returned by a query, you use the limit. So you want to limit something, you know, you don't want to, that's why it's called limit. The following illustrates syntax. So you read, you already, you can practice at your own pace as well after we did this because you already have the database they are using here. So the limit is here. So you want to do a limit. The first return all rows in the employees table sorted by this. However, to return just top five rows, you can just say you order it by descending order. So I want you to tell me what I would do if I want to descend, make, do, I want to return the top 10 rows based on descending order. What will I do now? So please, how will I correct this? Select everything. So what should I do? Let's, let's put limit to 10 first. 10, yes. And then I want it in descending order. I will put the D, E, S, C. Okay. Okay, perfect. Should I run it now? Let's try that. He says it's not working. Why? Remember. Do you think limit is part of SQL code? I don't think it's it. You remember it's my SQL they are using to query in the database. You know, remember we did it there. I think I said we should use top five or something like that. 
or what do you think mm. Mm. oh we can use limit okay that's good so why is it not working for us or probably we are not can we just copy that oh, i think it left. no not this one uh, that one, that same one, this one. Uh, no, there's this one that has other by then descendant that I saw just now. Where do you see it? This one, salary. Yeah, let's, let's just use that and see. So we are sure that SQL Server does. Limit. Okay. You had one that says use limit. So I believe you then. If you get it, I'm very happy now because we, I'm not sure we did it then. Okay. So what we're going to do, since it says select, so normally Microsoft use, we just say select top 10. See what happened. Right. Because they use top. So you have to get used to SQ, sometimes, what happened? I will tell you what happened. Limit is for my SQL. Limit is so is they are the same thing, but some languages change. Limit is for my SQL or Microsoft Access. Is Microsoft Access not using limit? But be, though they call it SQL, it's still query because they are most of them are the same. But the reason why they use SQL languages, my SQL languages, is because most websites are built on my SQL database backend okay that's why they use that but normally i use top 10 limit doesn't work honestly to be sincere um i don't know why but why they put it there as but it's funny because people will not know but don't worry we'll find some other things as well top 10 descending so like the one we did the other one like you know other by i don't know maybe employees and so on and so forth then it will change as well i hope you get it now um so you could see now 24,000 is the highest, 17,000, 17,000. So if I remove this DSC now, which is descending, it's going to change. It's going to just change accordingly. You see, ascending thing up to this place. Now, if I remove this, I don't want to order anything. Everything would just be everywhere. You understand what I'm trying to say? Because I don't order anything. I didn't do anything. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So that is it. Um, so do we understand limits now? So limit is order bar and select top two rather than, there's another one we'll come across later on anyway. So let's move on. Is that okay for us now? S square doesn't use fetch. Let's go to where. Is that okay? We'll go to where. We know how to use where. Where is to meet a condition for the for what you want to query to come to pass. So, for example, if I say select star, dummy, I want you to answer this question. If I select select star from employees, let me put it here. What does it mean? Look, because I want this thing to be practical. From employees, it means select all. You see, we select, select all. all. Good, you got it here. Now, when I now said where, what does it mean? Where, why did I need to add where? If I want to meet a condition now, that means that select everything, look for everything in this, that, in this table, employees, where, so that means that I want to now limit it to certain things, where, to meet a condition. I can now say where, Last name, remember, we did white card. I can say where like name is like, remember, it starts with what? A or it starts with K. Which one will start with K? Percentage K, isn't it? We will now do this, isn't it? I'm not, I'm, I'm, I can't remember. That start with K. Is it last name here? You have to, you see, that's why you have to sometimes go back to 
Is it, oh, last name. I made a mistake, isn't it? Underscore. So we should be fine now, isn't it? But he's still giving, I don't know why he's doing this. So we are fine now. Is it percentage K? Who can remember? You have to remember. Why K percent, let's say. So just yeah. give you a K. Perfect. So where is start with K? Do you see it now? So, but you can go back to the white card, which I showed to us before. Please don't forget. So I'm just giving you where. So where can meet a condition? I can continue and say where last name like and. I can say and. So if I say and, we are going to use and and her. So I will tell you different. What's the meaning of and? It means that this thing must meet these two conditions at the same time before it can do it. So and I say and. I can say and first name like what I can say first name like um which one can we use this percent okay let's use and let's say employee id and um, do you think employer no i'm looking at what we can use the and job id is less than 13. Job ID is less than 13. What's going to give now? What do you think? It's going to give two because this one, are, so it meets the two conditions. Do you see now? Now, if I say or job ID, that means I'm going to look for everything in database or all means that it's a separate condition now. So, or this. So if I do this, look, it's going to bring us so people that are all as well. Do you see what the difference between all and hand? Hand we meet all conditions. Why all we meet each condition and combine them together? You see what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So I hope we are all fine now with that. So that's where for you to meet conditions. So there are many things you can do with where. Where is very powerful. And after you use where, and then you now say, okay, I can say where, I can now say group. After you use group, that's how it follows. And then say order by and so on and so forth. But later on, when we begin to do complex queries, later on, I want us to be comfortable. Then we'll be com you know, combining scripts and everything will be comfortable. Yes, that's why. I hope we now get it now, okay? How to use this where. It's just a simple part of it, but to just prepare us for scripting. Okay. Um, right. Then let's go. Which one have, have we done? Comparison operators is easy. It's just the same thing. You have to be using where to compare things. You have to understand equal to, not equal to, you know, I use less than now. So you use it where, where not equal to. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So it's still the same thing. Where's last name is equal to, not equal to. Do you get like operator, you know, all those things where like, so it's still the same thing. Where department ID is not equal to eight, you get. So it's all those things as well. So I don't think that one's difficult. You just look at your, you know, if you're an engineer before or anything, they what we call data sheets. You know, you go to data sheet if you're an engineer, you want to build, you know, you want to build something. Ah, uh, you, you know, you are trying to build um, a certain hardware. You know, you have to go through the data sheet, isn't it? To build the hardware, maybe as an electronics engineer, you have to look at data sheet or else we just be doing what you don't know. So everything has, you know, manual, how they ask instructions. So these are instructions for you to go back to and say, oh, I've forgotten. What is, how, how will I do like white card so you could see that i could not remember all the white card but i know that there is like white card you understand what i'm trying to say where so i won't do this it's easy for you to follow the last examples and use it do you have any question on this i think it's okay that way and then we go to we can practice on our own as well logical operators is still the same thing with where trust me is the one I gave example now, and not equal to. So I can say not null, not between. They normally use between 
uh, dates. So I can say, can you give me the, so maybe we should use between now. We should practice between. Probably it's going to work with us here. Between low and high, between, I think we practice it. I remember, did we not do with between? We did, between A and Z, between this date range and date range. I'm not sure if we did it. Between low and high. Let me look for one example we can practice. Yes, let's use this. Between salary and this thing. So let's practice this. So between is logical operators. Um, are we there? Okay. I said select everything in this employee's tables where salary is between 2,500 and 2,000. I want to know people that are getting 2,500 and 2,900. So now I want people to tell me what's my mistake here. <laughs> this is what I like. What do you think my mistake is here now? I like something like that. Where salary between two? What was the mistake I made? What do you think the mistake I made? Who can help me? So they are the one that wrote it now. It's not me. I copied JJ and I pasted it. What do you think is the mistake? between so it's not in the same line it's supposed to be in the same line don't mind them where normally shouldn't be because i've been using sql but somehow it's just through error so where salary between 2500 and you cannot say all it will give you error there's nothing like all here because this is not economic all condition there's nothing like all it can't work do you see because between work with and, I can say where salary not between 2,500, it means going to give the opposite, isn't it? Not. So I'm using the logical operators now together. I can say where salary is not null, is not, they use that a lot as well, is not null. It means that where there's no new value, because some places have new value. Do you understand? So I can say where um, salary is not like, I can say it's not like, it doesn't start with, it's not like, or I can say where first name is not like, first name is not like. So you just find your own word like, it's not like starting with L, M, L, percentage, and then, and then I just get it, what's happening? I don't think it will work. Where first name? It can't work with like. Sorry, I'm using too much. But you just practice like, you know, all those things anyway. But I can, I can use, I think I can use not like rather than like. Yeah, not like. Rather, it's not like. It's not new. It's only working with it's not new. But not like. So you get used to it. Don't need to memorize it but you just need to look at the data sheet or any instruction to know how to do that so that means i want the range of value that is not k that's not starting with l you know so the first name that's not starting with l so if you go here the first name doesn't start with l okay that's all so that's between and not and any example of logical operators um mm -hmm. that's good In, I explained to us in, you know, the last time I was talking about where this and this, but in, we fulfill multiple conditions. So for example, in these examples now, they give you in. Instead of saying where and, 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 but you are trying to refer to the same thing. Okay, let me give you, let me, let me write this so that you can understand in. Look, select everything from employees. Where job ID in, that is where this job ID. So let's first execute this. You know, you can select only this and say, did you see, I've not finished everything. I just select everything here now. I I copied only this part to just execute it now. You see now four, five, six, but I said, I want only where job ID is eight, nine, 10. So I now say where job ID in, rather than saying where job ID equal to eight and 
or no, because I have to use all there. Where I rather than saying where job ID is equal to eight or job ID equal to nine, I will use in so I'll now bracket them eight, nine, ten. Did you see it now? So I now say I can even combine them and say or or I can say first name equal to I can say or first name like like I can say like J. So that means anything that I have J as well, like in I'm just forming my own, I'm adding to it as well, and then trying to help us. See what happened now. See where job ID is eight, nine, ten. It's going to put it there. And also you will see one has three because they are starting with what J. This is the first name start with J. This one also start with J, J. Do you see what's happening there? So if I remove this now, if I say and, and simply means that it must fulfill all this condition, everything. So it will reduce because I'm trying to say and it should meet also. So let's see, what do you think is going to come up now? Eight, nine, ten. If everything that start with J doesn't have 10 here, it's going to bring nothing, isn't it? Because eight, nine, ten here doesn't have J. So if I say execute, it's going to bring nothing. Okay. Oh, sorry. I made a mistake. It, it's going to bring nothing. But if I say M, look at M. I know one of them has M also. You see, one of them has 10. M, Michael, my name, Michael. So that's it. It's just logical. When you practice, you'll be able to understand more. So you could see now the power of where with all these things as well, within. In means that instead of using or 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 for particular column to meet a condition, you can just say job ID in eight nine ten. You will come across this even if you are doing dashboard reporting, especially in SSRS, because you might go to a company and you are doing dashboard, and one of those things that you might not write code, but in one of the settings it will just say in. If you don't understand what is in, in simply means you can put multiple values there to meet the conditions. Do you get what I'm trying to say? And even if you are struggling, you know, you have to, if you, if you go to the internet, you know, you want to ask questions, they will know that, you know, you know what you are saying. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So like the comment one as well, ah, this is the comment, you know, you have to know that this is a comment. So I told us again, let me repeat myself. If I put a table here now, say, select, one. do you think these things, is going to execute. No, the first line will not execute, isn't it? Because it's a comment, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Select so star from. It just said command, but it's not going to give results because it's a comment. But if I remove this. Oh, sorry. Because I'm just doing NTN here. So you see now, sorry, because it's, there's no combination there. So never mind. Select this from, do you get what I'm trying to say now? So that is it. So comment is to just describe a program and so on and so forth. So um, let's continue. Guys, we are getting there. So that I have already combined some things we are going to practice as projects. So don't worry, you will learn. Subquery. No, we didn't do subquery because that one's advanced. Okay, no, it's not. It's null. I told us it's null. It's null simply means the value is null. Nothing is there. So what's the difference? Who can tell me the difference between zero and null? We can try. I think null is there's nothing, isn't it? So what is zero? Zero is the value. Okay, say value. Yes, that's good. There's nothing new. That's good. So they have already explained. So we know that we know this. I don't need to explain my and I explained it's not null before anyway. It's null, it's not null. So we have so I'm looking for a place where phone number is null or is not null. So it's going to bring it out. So let's look at this. If one of these means that it's null. So if I go here, 
we are going to send database. Say yeah, it's not new. It's going to bring the database. So that means where. So sometimes you are working and they say, ah, there are some people they have not put in their phone numbers and they haven't put in their phone numbers really. Why? They have not put. Oh, what am I going to do? I'm going to query it then. Where phone number is null, or sometimes you have a total. Uh, win, hey, can you someone remind me? I want to give this as a project to us. I want you to find people that they put in their phone number, but their phone number is not correct. So one of those things you have to now the what we call regular expression when you start advancing query. Regular expression would know if really this code. The first three line is the code of a phone number. Do you get what I'm trying to say now? So these are those things you learn later on. Regular expression simply means you write something to meet a condition. You know, anytime you are writing a phone number, maybe some website, if you don't put the code, the you know, the first three code for one particular country, it's not going to work. So these are the things that you can dictate as well and say, oh, if they don't, you can say we have phone number and I put the regular expression there blah, 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 blah. And then I would say, find it out in the database and it's going to find it out. So that's the power of query. Is that okay? But in this case, I can say where phone number starts with four, four. So let's see, probably we can do that. Where phone number like, <laughs> I hope, I don't know their phone number, but let's try it. Let's try, let's try 079. I'm not sure they are going to even put it there. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> if they put it there, I'll laugh. Okay, you know what we're going to do? I'm going to check their phone number. We'll be able to do that. So we have 515. So we're going to say where phone number starts with 590. Let's see. Just a small example. So try it now you see now it brings only the phone number of 590 okay in some places you have dash so i'll write the right card to say does it have dash if it doesn't have dash they will bring it you know the query will bring it out and so on and so forth okay is that okay for you guys thank you so much there's a there's a question um on the yes box. There's a question on on the chat box. Okay, the question and the person in Toko. A new data quality, blah blah blah. If you read it. Okay, yeah. A new data quality issue has been allocated to you. This is that the word from the business environment as well and issue. Should I just read it silently or out? Okay. Read it out to go on the video. Okay. A new data quality issue has been allocated to you. The data steward from business development team has reported an issue with central access data. They have a requirement to analyze geographic central data to link in with sales forecasting. They are having issues due to the quality of center address data. The data is manually input by an operations team. How will you begin? And what are the steps you will follow? Okay, now let's analyze it. A new data quality issue has been allocated to you. The data steward from the business development team has reported an issue with central access data. They have a requirement to analyze geographical center data to link in with say, how will you begin and what are the steps you will follow? Number one, the first thing you follow is that what, where are they inputting the data to? What type of database? You have to make an inquiry. Some might, you know, some might be inputting data first into Excel. So are we, are you trying to, so what, you know, you have to know where they are trying to input the data. And that's when the, it first begin as well, because in this case, they said, a new data has been, it does well from business world as prepare an issue with the center access data. So what is the center access data? So that's where they are inputting the manual, isn't it? So they have a requirement to analyze a geographic central that to link in with sales forecasting. So that means that they want to link it with sales forecasting. So you must plan. Maybe they are using, you know, Salesforce, you know, to 
do their sales forecasting or they are using another tool for their sales forecasting. So there must be a, an integration. Probably they want to integrate this sales forecasting system so that anytime they are doing anything on this sales forecasting is linked to the central access data and it's going to be picking data from it to do the sales forecasting. So it depends on the system. So for example, I'll give two examples. Um, one was, it might not be related, but it's related as well. They want to forecast for something, but they have the, the, the they manually input the data into Microsoft Access. So the problem now is that they want it also in the reporting in the book. So the first thing, we do is that we try to create an ODBC connection. So it depends on what they are using. So they are using Microsoft Access, but the kind of system we're using is SSRS. We create an ODBC connection. So that's why you have to understand about, you know, connecting to database as well. So ODBC connection to connect to database and query it to get what you want to reflect on your own dashboard. So it depends, and some might be easy, you know, it might be Excel as well, like they are using Excel, Excel can communicate, you know, Excel might not easily communicate with other, but SQL, other, you know, forecasting tools like for reporting services can easily connect to other tools like that. But Excel might require, you know, you, if it's Excel to Excel, then probably they may have to have write query or macro or something like that to link. But people are moving away from that now. So basically, the sales forecasting tool can be anything. It can be Tableau as well. They are using for their forecasting. It can be, you know, it can be uh, Salesforce as well, which can be linked as well. All this system has integrating tools as well and things that can integrate and connect as well. So, but the first thing is to establish where it's coming from. You know, you have to speak to the a... business development team first. You have to speak to, you know, what system they are using so that, yeah, should be called. Yeah, you want to say something? Tell me. No, when they said the data was manually imputed by an operations team, I think that's where the error began. Maybe there's no consistency. Um, maybe yeah, there... you you in in obvious environment, you as you said, you not assume that they are making mistakes when they are entering the data. As long as they are validating the data, do you get what I'm trying? So, for example, now you can say. Oh, Probably, yeah, they are manually inputting it. Anyway, there are some things that it needs to be manually inputted, regardless, even though people are saying you're automating, automating, unless the people that are doing it, even off in anything, things still need to, it starts from somewhere. Things that we do on the PC, it has to be manually inputted. So you cannot assume that you understand. So mm -hmm. nothing cannot be done automatically, mm -hmm. everything. I think, I think this, where they said, I'm reading this one again, Mm -hmm. so they're having issues they're having issues due to the quality okay so that means that there's no consistency in yes. the data so, so how can they manage yeah they have to put things in place to to yeah. validate yeah. the data so you, and you mentioned something just now you said maybe i think you mentioned something um i can't remember the exact way you put it but that's what i'm thinking maybe you have a column of last name okay Okay. Uh, maybe within the last name, someone instead of saying um, strings, someone mistakenly put a number. You know, what we want to see is the our characters. Now okay. you, you not mistakenly put maybe uh -huh. a number inside it. So That's okay. one of our projects. You that yeah. it won't happen because when you had so do you remember when we say we want to create table? Did yeah. you remember when when we copy those things? You will see that they do that there. Yeah. In that create table one would be like this one you cannot enter anything because it's is a primary key mm -hmm. so you cannot just put anything there you won't put anything the computer will automatically put the numbers there because mm -hmm. it's validated so this one we say is number so that means that you cannot enter character here in mm -hmm. fact you can you will say it's a phone number so it will not just accept any number here it will say phone number did you see now yeah. this one will say only character number will not appear in a name Exactly. So like you said Every, something about, you said, where was the data source? Maybe the data source in this case could be Excel. Yeah. Is there a way you can set Excel to... Yeah, there is There is a way to do that as well in Excel. But sometimes, you know, people are not... So there's a way to do that. 
in yeah. Excel as well. But it's more people are really there's still many mistakes in Excel and not many people are expert in Excel, but few, but you can validate, but it takes a lot of effort and time to say you want to quick, you know, it takes time, but it's easy to do. Like for example, you can define certain things in Excel and say don't even put data here. You mm -hmm. can make it read only. And not only read only, you can say in Excel that I don't want you can write something to say it's only going to be email here, it's going to be text here, it's going to be number here. Yes, it's possible. So there are some people that are expert in Excel. I can do it, but I have to go back and start reading things again, start querying if it will take me days before I start mastering it again and so on and so forth. But people so have more that quality thing cannot really happen in SQL. But it depends on who designed the database as well. So that comes to designing database as well. We are still going to do SQL design later on, but in the future, probably. I'll tell someone to do that, but I might do some, but I'm not an expert. That's in database design. Database design, it, it, it takes a lot of effort because it's not only about that. Database design is about, you know, you want to avoid redundancy of data. And, you know, in all these tables as well that they design, you don't want redundancy of data where you have so many, so many primary keys, so many repeated data, some last name is here, last name is independent, last name is an employee, they are not linked to each other, even though the, the information is correct. So that's what we call database design. We normalize, if you have heard of normalization before in database design. So normalization simply means, that's why you see people that design your, um, that design your um, pay slip. There are something that go into pay slip, especially pay slip, it has to involve designing of database so much because pay slip is something that is in fact you they do a lot of hard work to do that because there's a lot to do to make sure everything works in pay slip most uh, that's a good example i can give in pay slip if you want to do pay slip there are a lot of database design that go in there because you don't want to have repeated you know things so we'll do that i have a video for that to start us with later on but that will be towards the end that would be like we are comfortable with scripting. We are we are satisfied with SQL. But in this case, I'm going to teach us how to validate data as well. We are going to do it in creating design, create database. When we are creating the table, so if you go to the website here, this is a good question he asks. You remember the website where we we copy the code. You will see that it gives a lot of. Um, let me see if it's still here. Create table. Ah, we have to go back. Is better that way. Let's go. Hold on. Um, hold on. Um, I want to go to our chat box and look at it. It's better to look at it now. Copy. Can we all see my screen? I want to go back there and see it. Okay. Let's go to home. Now, let's go to sample database. I just want to show us the sample now. Okay, here it goes. Do you see this Microsoft SQL? Look, create table regions. Mm. Region ID, it is primary key. It should not be this identity integer, means it's a number alone, so you cannot enter character there. This one character should not be more than 25. Did you see now? Mm -hmm. This one is country ID. It should not be more than two character. Primary key. So it means that if I go to countries, so let's say select countries now. Select from countries. Let's see what it's going to do. And look at character country ID. What is it going to do there? Can we do that? Now let me do that. Select from countries. Okay. Look, you see now AR, two character. Did you see it yourself? Region ID, one character. Remember, they put one there in that sample. Did you see it now? Are we all okay? Yeah. So you could see they have divined it. Let's look for phone number. If they really divine phone number, where is phone number? Is it employee? Yeah. Yeah. Look, they didn't even put it, but you can put it 20. Look, phone number, but in SQL, there's a section you call phone number. Should I show it to you? They don't put it here, but you can write it. I'll say default, no. They say 20 car, I'll show it to you here. 
you, you can manually design your table here and say, okay, I want to create a table. Look at me here, guys. Let me create it now. I'll say new table. It will come up here. You can do the same thing they use script for. So you can do it manually, but it takes time as well. The same thing. Anyway, I hope they have it. Look at what's happening here. Let me call it a name. Eza, I call it Eza. I'll now say what data type. Look, there are different things you can put here. So binary data, there should be phone number, isn't it? Geography is there. Money is there, numeric. Hmm. Okay, so if it's not, if it's going to be VECA, VECA simply means the combination of characters, okay? Variables, characters. Mm. So, however, you can define it. I will show it to you. Uh, some people would have done it. Make So if you want to know how to do that, if you want to really solidify it, because these people make it simple for us. But if you want to solidify, I will show you. I've done that before. So I'll just say, you want to do it? Ah, I say, how is possible? How can I make, can I say, make, I call it regular expression. Create regular uh, expression, SQL, regular expression, phone number. Let me see if it's okay. Look. But this is what the person wants. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of similar, but but in this case, you will set it. Okay, set it to this when you're creating tables. So let me say create table. Um, but you have to learn regular expression, but that's advanced now, not now, but you have to learn it. But it's not compulsory as long as you have said only number that's enough so and the number we follow but you can say regular expression means after three put iphone there so how to make a phone number in regis pattern okay microsoft is the one see select phone number source string so let me see select phone number phone number See, when you are not trying to say it, we, they give this person the answer. So this is the answer here. Phone number three, it means that the first line will be three code, one, one. So you will learn that later on. Probably, we might, we might be a long time before we do this regular expression to stop. Because that's the phone number, but it's not compulsory, honestly, to be sincere. Honestly, you just say it's a number, and that's all. Okay? But later on, you get it. But when you get start, you see this person is already comfortable with SQL. We can't start jumping into it now you, using regular expression and everything. And it's not that the person knows it, memorizing it. You just have to look at regular expression, you know, way of writing it and start combining them. Okay? That's what we call regular expression. Is that okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. We'll get there. So you can define it here, create table small time test you can say i want only time stamp time integer unique identifier means primary key and so on and so forth okay allow news means that if you don't want anything to you want it to be blank or you want news if anything is not there allow news now look yeah i think it should be there let me try this numeric probably is here probably phone number because i'm thinking it should be I was thinking they all they didn't do it again. I thought they did it. But it's well. I'm I'm disappointed. Anyway, so I don't want us to budge out tonight too much. So we'll st yeah? Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Um we will continue with this website. Do you all guys like this website? Probably our next lesson on Sunday. I want us to do it on Sunday again. Do you like this? Website yeah. so that I'll practice it more. Yeah. Oh, go to. The... Please take note of our project too. The um the one I said we do. I've already start writing them down. We'll be doing it together. So I'll be guiding us as well. I'll give you answer to every project as well. 
So, but you have to practice first as well. So it's easy for us. So we'll do inner join. Let me even show you inner join here. Remember inner join. Let's do it with your own. Select this. So you can practice what you have done tonight in this website before we come to the next lesson. Now, I will show you something. I will share the video to you. I want to finish SQL today. So I will later stop recording. I will show you a preview of the video you'll be getting from me. I bought this on Udemy myself, so I have it on my Udemy account. But now they are not doing sales, so I will stop recording now. Thank you so much. So don't worry about this. This is for private. Understand so.